Ah, uh, so I'd like to do three things together um, in this in this group today. Um, nobody here is completely new to drumming or completely new to handpans. Um, but the first thing I want us to do is spend some time exploring the instruments, um, getting comfortable sitting, playing, holding, learn a little bit about what some of the names of the bits are, and get to know each other. Right, so forming familiarity with this instrument and who's in the room. Um, then we're going to, once we all kind of feel comfortable and we're moving on, we're going to start talking about the stroke, the way you slap the steel to make it sound good. And what we're really going to be focusing on is, is two different things. One is connecting what you're hearing with what you're doing. All right. Important musician skill will be listening a lot to each other. And I'm going to also teach you a little bit about what I call drilling, which is a process of getting better playing handpans. How to, um, yeah, how to pick a skill you want to get better at and spend time intentionally improving it. You did start the video. I did start the video. I've got my little green light going. Hi. I think I also forgot to, to clap myself in, but whatever. So that's the second thing. We'll talk about strokes. We'll get a little more comfortable playing different notes on the drum. Um, then I want to give you guys a little bit of, we, we've got two hours, right? We're not going to be literally playing for two hours. I want to give you some time to spread out around the room and play with your, play with the drum solo a little bit to listen, see what you can explore. Then we're gonna come back together and do some jamming as a group. Cause that's for me, like this is, this is why I do this. I do this cause yes, I play in my, my office all the time. I apparently now teach other people how to play. <laughs> this is a new thing for me, it's weird. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we're gonna jam together. I'll teach you the first song you get to learn on your hand pan. We will play it together. Um, and then hopefully by about 8.15, we'll kind of leave the structure behind and do some review and takeaways, answer questions, chat, whatever. Okay. Let's, I guess, start first of all to get ourselves ready to play drums. I feel like we've all kind of had a little bit of breathing and a little bit of moment of relaxation. Um, but yeah, I see, let's, let's follow Paul here for a moment and get our bodies ready to, to do something interesting and unique. So I like to roll, what do, what do you like to do, Iris, to get your body ready for doing something? Yeah, I just, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I like to roll my shoulder blades. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Ooh, Paul, I like this. Ugh. Ooh, thank you. Open up behind the shoulders. Oh. Okay. And then for everyone's body and sitting, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel solid? Do you feel like the drum is is well placed and not going anywhere? Uh, jewelry has the ability to scratch or ding, and scratches and dings are never any good. Yeah. Gotta keep them pretty. Yeah. You gotta keep them sounding right. Cause I've seen what happens when they get a little uh, and it's sad because they're so beautiful and then they become kind of not beautiful. So we were just talking about sitting and being comfortable and having the drum on your lap and kind of just being able to be present with your, your body and the instrument. So I think we all kind of have a handpan. Um, I want to make musical cacophony here for just a moment and just let you guys kind of feel around on the instrument for a bit. Just play it a couple times, just touch it a bunch of times and make some sounds with it and listen. Cause we're making sure we feel comfortable with the drum making sure we're starting to connect what we're hearing with what we're doing. And, and 
push it a little bit. Play with some of these other parts. Play with some of these other parts. Don't harm the instrument. Don't punch it. Don't hit it with bone. <laughs> but, you know, see what kind of other weird, weird noises you can get out of this thing if you hit it in other places. And that was just on the upper part of this. What do you call this part again? That is an excellent segue into the anatomy of the handpan. <laughs> so, what do we call all these bits? Okay, so first of all, the whole thing is a handpan, also sometimes called a hong, sometimes called a drum, sometimes, you know, arcana, a isthmus, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It has, at the top and the center, is what's called the ding. Right, everybody, give me a couple dings. Just give me some big dings. So this is the core note that the drum is turned uh, tuned around. If you play instrument, this is the the key of the scale of the drum. Um, you're playing a D curd. Okay. Um, that's made by Isthmus Instruments here in Madison. Okay. I just want to totally give a plug and a thank you to our sponsor, Isthmus wow. Instruments, who is loaning us hand pans for tonight. Oh. And I heard this is the more, most commonly used. Yep, D Kurds and D Celtics, oh. very common drum. I was thinking I was leaning toward that for some reason. I don't know. The Celtic, yeah. So, what the difference is, same, can you bring yours? Is the same note on top, yeah. but different notes around. I yeah. Would imagine. yeah. So then the notes around are called the tone fields. Mm -hmm. um, each tone field, that's the name of the flat area. Mm -hmm. um, and then inside the tone field is a dimple. And importantly, we'll get when we start getting really into our stroke, we'll be talking a lot about that edge between the dimple and the tone field because that's going to be our sweet spot we're going to be aiming for. Gotcha. Um, the edge of the drum here is called the rim. This is a pretty sturdy part of the drum. Um, when they're made, they're glued together along this, and then many of them have a, ri a rim protector. Um, Iris, your drum does not have a rim protector, um, but that's it's pretty sturdy, unless, God help you, you drop it this way. Can, did they come off? Yeah, yeah, you can take it off. I think it I took it off. Oh, yeah. um, other names of drum bits. Um, this is, as we mentioned before, this is the goo. G-U. Um, yours is tuned, I'm sure, if you want to give it a couple smacks. Yeah. I think that's one of the nicest sounding goos on a drum I've ever played. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing I've heard anybody say once. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, is good this drum and Iris's drum have bottom notes. So these are additional tone fields that are built into the bottom shell of the drum. That are not meant to be struck? They are, yeah. I can play it this way if I want. Yes. Or if I'm... How did I just turn my drum upside down? That was weird. Um, or... Um, when we're talking about uh, a little bit more advanced drum anatomy here, there's this area between the ding and the tone fields up on the top of the drum. Wait, the tone field being oh, the edge. Yep, okay. yep. So this is the ding, and it kind of, here, let me do it this way. This is the ding. It kind of takes up this whole flat area. And then this is the tone field. And so the space in between the two of them here, which you were saying you can kind of, doesn't make some good sounds, uh -huh. that's what's called the shoulders. Um, and they do make good sounds. Okay, well, so we've learned there are a lot of fun things. Wasn't it right. But wait, can we repeat? I thought that was the ding. Yes, ding. Oh, the whole tone thing field. Ding. Yeah, that whole thing. So you don't distinguish between the raised and the, is there a name for, it's all ding. 
Some people call them nipples because on some drums they look like nipples, to be honest. But especially yours. Especially mine. <laughs> I see. I see. Um, but no, normally the, the ding is just the name for the whole thing up top. Is this What kind of different parts do you hear in the sound? Go ahead. Like, those sound like they ring out a little longer, mm -hmm. almost like the metals, my guess would be thinner. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And yours and mine sound tankier, as you put it earlier mm -hmm. with this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are you also. It's not tanky, it's tanky too. Yeah. The tankiest? <laughs> That's the tanky drum. That, so, so these two drums are 2.2 uh, millimeter nitrided steel. Okay, okay. so 2.2 millimeters thick. Uh -huh. That is a three millimeter nitrided steel. So that drum is heavier and bulkier and easier to tune. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Paul and I are both on stainless steel. Okay, so stainless steel is very light. So it's more durable and probably will have a better yeah. Actually, it's way less durable. Because has because what it is, it's the sound, yeah, the sound is more yes, is it's resonance. Yeah, right. There's more resonance. There's more what we also call crosstalk, which crosstalk is where the sound is bouncing around inside mm -hmm. the shell and literally causing other notes to vibrate. Um, so this drum, like if you listen, so. Okay, that's the C, and then we're gonna listen for crosstalk on this G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we're just going to to focus on playing these four notes for right now, because um, I want to talk about stroke. Okay. Um, and we all have four slightly different notes down there, so it'll sound a little bit cacophonous, but they're the easiest notes usually to reach and to play. So we just want to play, I just want you guys to just play those four bottom notes um, using your index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb, your right and your left hand. Okay, so do a couple with your thumb. Play a couple with your index finger, a couple with your middle finger. So remember as you're t playing this instrument, you're touching it. And what I want you to feel for, just for a moment, is Feel under your index fingers for where that line is between the tone field and the ding, or in the, excuse me, the tone field and the, the dimple, right? And feel so that that line is kind of going across the pad of your finger this way, okay, so just this, this way. And play, yeah. <laughs> multiple places on that edge between the dimple and the tone field where you can play. So play kind of around and okay. So the one adjustment that I see with Paul that I want to point out mm -hmm. is that Paul doesn't play with his drum flat across the top. He actually takes it, instead of holding it you know, flat, he tilts it just a little bit. Oh. Okay, and I just kind of want to point that out because I've also noticed in myself and in some of us as well that there's a tendency, um, if the drum is flat, to play with your wrists tense. So you see how I'm pulling my hands back. I have this tension in my forearms in order to produce like a good stroke on those notes. And that that can be alleviated by tilting the drum so that these notes are more kind of in the plane of your hand. 
And yes, it means you can't really see very well up here, but that's okay, right? But you do want to tilt it, you're saying? Yeah, you oh, do okay. want to kind of tilt right, it a little bit okay, gotcha. so that, yeah, so that your wrists stay nice and straight and aren't cocked back like this while you play. Because you don't want to get like... So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are going to do a basic eight note scale. Okay, and we're gonna do some scales for a while. Just do 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 do. Okay, and this is our first drill. And so what I mean by drill are repetitive exercises that we do with the accompaniment of oh, I'm gonna do that one. Still got the with the accompaniment of a metronome to keep us all together, and we're gonna go slow and speed up as we get more comfortable and speed up until we get more comfortable. Then in order to keep our hands balanced, we're gonna switch back to the left hand, to our non-dominant hand. So I'll say dominant hand and non-dominant okay. hand. Okay. So start with your dominant hand. Um, yeah, and so we're gonna, we're gonna do a, a basic eight note scale. Um, and I think if, I may, Iris, may I borrow your drum? Because mm -hmm. this will let you guys kind of hear what it sounds, I think pretty commonly what it'll sound like. So, okay, so we're gonna start with our dominant hand on the lowest tone field, okay, and then go up the scale. So start with your index finger, start where you're comfortable. Okay. Because part of drilling is at some point I'm gonna say, okay, now switch to a different finger. Okay, now switch to a different finger. Thank you. So let me give you guys a minute to just noodle on that and try it out. You don't have to get comfortable with it because that's the whole point of the exercise. The drill is for us to get comfortable with it, but I just wanna make sure you kind of have a sense in your head. So I'm going to start the metronome. Um, have, have, has anybody worked with a metronome before? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. This will be new to you. If you want to get one on your phone, I'll let you know. <laughs> and if you want to pick it up, I'll help you get set up. Okay. One, two, three, four. It's very, very slow. So. What are you going to start playing in your head? You're going to go do, 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 Okay? Really slow. Let's take it together. We're going to start with our dominant hand. In four, three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna push it then even more because what I'm trying to do is find the spot where everybody's really uncomfortable playing this fast. 
What I wanted you to feel is as you're drilling, right, you're going to want to keep changing things around. And when you feel uncomfortable like this, that's the clue that you need to slow it down a little bit more and kind of work at a slightly slower tempo. Or if you switch over, so let's, we're going to keep it this fast and switch over to our non dominant hand right now. Hope it's happening. <laughs> okay then, yeah. My brain's gonna break. That's when we slow it down. And how are we on time? Oh, clicks. oh goodness, it's 7.48 already. I wanna get to jamming. This will be the last time we go through this and then we're gonna start jamming, so I wanna jam. Okay, so we're gonna start with our non-dominant hand. Okay, look at the drum. What are you about to do? It's something kind of different. Everybody ready for this? Four, three, two, one. It's your low tone yeah. that starts it, because you can't hear it. Let's just fix that. You can hear the three clicks, but that fourth one just disappears. This is why I love this. Yeah. I just fixed it. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. together. <laughs> I don't know if it's the non-dominant hand or the skipping in the scale mm -hmm. that throws my head off more. Yep. And, and practice. Why are we skipping? This is why we... Oh, is that it's not... Oh, it's, the skipping in the scale. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not right. going through the, the range yes. of the correct yep. direction. Yep. They're going to drive in the wrong way in a one-way street. <laughs> Okay, so we started out um, getting comfortable with the drums. I, it, do, you, do you guys feel that you're a little bit more better able to handle them, move them around, feel what the notes are? We talked a bit about the anatomy, dings, tone fields, goos, shells, etc. We learned your first exercise, a basic eight note scale. It's a great way to just practice. Get yourself something that's just gonna ticket you and apologize to your family for the obnoxiousness of drilling. They usually appreciate pizza delivery. So if you start <laughs> drilling or you call for pizza and then you start drilling partway through, they'll get pizza. Um, <laughs> So the last thing I'd like to, for us to do together is to talk a little bit about um, playing kind of free form music in a group, what I call jamming. You know, some people might call, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different, but, but these are our drums and we can make beautiful music together. And drilling is, you know, kind of, but let's, let's play, play something together. Um, are we really gonna be able to play something? Yeah. Okay. So Wednesday nights, just to put in a plug for the regular handpan group, uh, we are here at Unity, uh, second and third, sorry, the first and third Wednesdays of the month. Um, free, anybody that wants to be here, right? It's first and thirds? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, is it yeah. going to be tonight? Well, and so I'm running the intro instead of our regular group. I see. And this is I how you I can come and okay. learn a little bit and join the group. Gotcha. Cool. Um, so you have more intros? Yes, I'm going to be running once a quarter. I'll be running an intro to handpan session. Okay. 
Yep, and then in between, we'll have the regular Wednesday night jam. And when we get to Wednesday night jam, we usually start out just by loosening up and like we'll play some quarter notes together just to get everybody playing. And then we transition into the first song. And this is kind of the, the, the touch point. It's, it's the equivalent of learning Mary Had a Little Lamb on the recorder when awesome. you were, you know, in fifth awesome. grade. So this is, this is the first song everybody learns on the handpan. Um, it comes from Handpan Dojo, David Kukeman's class. This is his first jam that he teaches you in that. Uh, so I'm just completely stealing it from him. Um, and it sounds like, well, actually, Paul, would you want to give a demo? Do, do, do you want to do you want to demo the, the first song? No. Okay. No. Um, ding, ding, chick. Yeah. Yep. So um, slowly, it's going to be ding, ding, taka, taka, ding, ding, ta. So we talked about talks a little bit. A talk played a couple times is where you kind of just hit the, the, the ding right on the edge of it with any finger, yeah. And you're kind of making a, so it's not the big ding, it's just kind of a sharp metallic kind of sound. So, yes, so uh, the, the sticking, the hand, okay, is gonna be dominant, dominant, Okay, so that dominant, non dom nom. Dom. I don't know how to explain how to do that. Quick. Um, so dominant, dominant, da, 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 dominant, dominant. Da. So it's a lot on your dominant hand, and that's okay. It's the first song. <laughs> Here, let me let you listen to it. That's about kind of where we play it. Feels about right. playing the same thing together over and over and over, right? We want to be able to have a little bit more improvisation space, right? A little bit more creativity in what we're doing. So how we do that in a group like this is we, we, we kind of think about people as holding the rhythm, holding the space, 
and other people improvising, okay? So holding the space is a really important role because typically you're not sitting here with a, I mean, we're not gonna, yeah, we're done with the metronome, right? We're gonna play together. And that means we collectively as a human, group of humans, we have to kind of agree on a whole lot of things without really talking about it. You know, what's the rhythm? <laughs> what are we playing? What's the tempo? Do we wanna speed up? What kind of energy are we putting into it, right? And we need to kind of agree to all of that. And that's what holding space is, right? So we hold. And so what we're gonna do is have, uh, oh, and I guess I should say when you're holding the space, it's really important to be consistent, right? Keep the tempo. It's okay to play the same thing over and over and over again. Hold the space. So what we're gonna do as we start to jam together um, is we're gonna go around the circle, allowing us an opportunity to improvise, okay? So five of the six of us, six, no, four of the five of us are going to be playing the basic, okay, and just over and over. And then we're gonna have an iris, would you be willing to start? Doing the improv, I'm much better at holding space, but I will try. Okay, well, but we did this together, right? We did. So you've had an experience with it before. I did. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, I thought you, so, so how this game works is, is you're gonna, we're all gonna start playing the basic, and holding the space, and then when you feel called, you're gonna do something a little creative. Okay, take you know two or three measures, two or three cycles around, do something interesting. When you're done, come back to playing the basic and come back to holding space with all of us and make eye contact with me. Okay. So we're gonna go around the circle this way. Make eye contact with me okay. and give us like the, some kind of signal or just be like, hey, Addy, you can go now and we'll pass it around the circle that way. Cool. Okay? And then the question is, what can... Unless I have an involuntary one of these first. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so think for yourself for a second, like what, what can you do to break out of that basic rhythm? What are some options? What are some things no you can idea. do? No idea until it comes. The inspiration will come or it won't. It will. You've learned tone fields, right? Um, you've learned a little bit of how to do a scale. You're welcome to just do a scale. Um, if you want to do something crazy, do something crazy. I'm going to do some crazy things because I like to do crazy things when my turn comes around. Um, especially because, you know, I got some big notes. But let's, let's, let's give this a try, yeah? All right, start us off. kind of what's the rhythm he's given us kind of nice and slow walking pace you're giving us good energy that's just kind of calm and
about oh no guys we got 13 more minutes oh. yes 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 yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, before we wrap up though, I want to pause just for a moment and just kind of go over what we've learned, reflect, and then yeah, we're going to do one more jam. Um, so we started out with hand pan, what it's called, what all the bits are, how to be comfortable when playing, how to sit comfortably, how to position the drum comfortably, um, how to be, connect what you're hearing to what you're doing how to use drills, which you can make up drills for whatever, make them up, they're great. How to use drills and the technique of working with a um, metronome to get better. 
You learned the first song. Everyone learns on handpan. And we had a jam awesome. where we had some people to hold space and some people to improvise. Great. That was a miracle. That was totally awesome. Is it beautiful? That was awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. think about it. Like, uh, okay, Paul and I know each other well. Iris and I have met before. We have never met before. Yeah. And in our minds, yeah. we came to an agreement yeah. with these instruments as yeah. to what we were going to do together mm -hmm. and it sounded beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. it is very it very is. cool